You're looking for a good router, huh? Thought you would poke around and see what your peers are using and what they think of them. I know it's difficult when you are looking at the top 10 lists and one list rates a router as a number one, but you go to another list and it has the exact same router at a number five. Even more difficult is looking at the ratings. This can really throw you for a loop. I've seen people give an item a one star just because the packaging was damaged. Really? You haven't plugged it in or touched it to a single piece of wood to see how it performs. But it gets a one star because the box was damaged. The way that I utilize this unregulated rating system is by first skipping over the five stars. Five stars means they are, they're happy with it. I will click on the four star, so that is all I see. I want to browse through them and see what it is lacking for that last star. Find matching complaints here will tell me there is something to be aware of. Then I will click on the one star. I will browse these to look for a pattern. Are there multiple comments that a screw comes loose or the on switch stopped uh, working after, after a week? This will give you a good indication of how reliable the tool is. When it comes to a router, a good place to start is first asking, do you want a fixed base router or a plunge router? Do you want it mounted or mobile? Should you go with a cordless or not? Do you want a quarter inch or half inch collet? I always like to throw in that I am not sponsored by any of the recommendations that I make. Let's answer these questions first. A fixed base router essentially locks the bit at a specific depth, while a plunge router has a spring that allows you to plunge the bit into the wood. So if I wanted to put an edge on a piece of wood from one side to the other, a fixed base router would be a good option. However, a plunge router can do the same thing. But where a plunge router excels over a fixed base router is I can start a cut in the middle of a piece of wood, where a fixed base cannot. Like if you wanted to cut a name or your street address into a piece of wood. In essence, a plunge router can do everything that a fixed base router can, can do and more. So what would the benefit be for purchasing a fixed base router? Well, that would lead us to our second question. A fixed base router would be a more cost effective option if I was going to mount it to a table, whereas a plunge router will cost you more and you would lose the benefit of the plunge mounting this to a stationary table. Now, should I go cordless? Yes. Having a handheld finish router will be a necessary convenience. This particular router costs me nothing. Every year, usually between Memorial Day and Father's Day, they have Ryobi Days. This is where you purchase a set of batteries and a charger for $99, and then you get to pick out a tool for free. One of my selections during this promotion was this hand, uh, handheld router. Brilliant marketing. Now, when I go to buy a cordless tool, it is more cost effective for me to select Ryobi since I already have Ryobi batteries. One thing they did that is kind of unheard of in the cordless tool industry is they made their new lithium ion batteries cross compatible with the older NICAD tool line. When it comes to cordless tools, I always say the same thing. If you already have started a cordless collection, I highly recommend that you continue to stay with that line of tools. This way you do not have to buy different batteries and chargers for each tool. Of course, our 
plunge router and the router we may be mounting to a table do not have cordless options yet. Now, what about the half inch and quarter inch collette sizes? This is just a representation of the size of bit that will fit into the collette. Well, this is a fairly easy decision because most of the half inch routers come with an adapter to accept quarter inch bits. Half inch routers tend to be considerably more robust. This can give you a deeper cut and allow you to use the larger bits. They also uh, tend to have higher amperage while boasting of up to two horsepower. Let's break it down. If you want a good beginning router, I would recommend a small cordless. This will do light cuts and is great for doing finish work like roundovers. If you are looking for one that you are going to attach to a table to remain stationary, lean towards a fixed base router. This will open up more options with greater cutting power. If you do not want to attach this to a table, that's fine also. For an additional price, you can add an edge guide and still have a very useful mobile tool. If you are looking for the all-encompassing tools that can do the job of both and be able to start, cut, uh, start a cut inside the edges of the wood, well, you are looking at the plunge router. So you want my recommendation on a router? Uh, if you couldn't tell already, I am a fan of Ryobi in this scenario. I have actually used their power tools for a long time, but don't think that my shop looks like a, a Ryobi warehouse. On the contrary, if I took you on a tour, you would see that I have a Frankenstein set of tools. I have Craftsman, DeWalt, Ryobi, and I even have some Wen power tools. The Ryobi routers are a, re a reliable and robust tool that will do what you need them to do. If you don't want to use my recommendations for whatever reason, that's fine. I just want to help you make an informed decision. As you become comfortable using your new router, you will become more and more attached to it. Like your favorite chair or that one spot on the couch that you just can't relinquish. Regardless of what router you are using, keep your bits sharp. Don't hesitate to replace a bit if you feel that it is getting dull from extensive use. This will put undue strain on the motor, which will drastically reduce the life of your tool. I will put a link in the description for the routers that I have recommended. I will also include links to the She Didn't Want It Woodworking website and Facebook page if you want to check them out. Feel free to ask any questions in the comments section and I will get to them as soon as I can. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit the bell icon to be notified of new episodes as they become available. If you are just learning the woodworking hobby, check out my Woodworking for Beginner video series. Until next time, keep it safe.